Hello everybody, I'm Ink, this is Magic Arena, and today I'm going to be giving you my thoughts, opinions, and overall review of the new drafting format. So this past weekend has been the first time that the public has been allowed to draft, but it has this unique spin on it that, for right now at least, your pod consists of you and seven other AI opponents. A lot of people have been griefing over this because they think it kind of takes away from the whole drafting experience. But from my playthroughs and my personal experience, there's a lot of benefits to this system. The first of which is that there's no time limit to your draft, so you're able to take as much time as you need on every single pick. Or if you need to, you can even get up and leave in the middle of your draft and come back and continue it later. And this extends to the actual games as well. You're still going to be playing between 3 and 9 games of Magic, but they don't all have to be in a row. So, of course, it's not the same kind of experience that you would get drafting at a local game store, but it's also not the time commitment. Signing up for a draft in Magic Arena does not mean that you have to be sitting at your computer for 4 to 6 hours straight. So what's it like drafting against AI? I don't believe Wizards has actually released any official information on the AI's programming, but from my experiences, I believe that each of the seven AI opponents have a list of goals and objectives that get randomized as each draft begins. So what does this mean for you? It means that some of your opponents are actually going to be prioritizing certain strategies or archetypes or colors or even abilities. So if you go into the event expecting to draft a certain color or archetype, you might find yourself cut by an opponent who's programmed to do the same thing. But a bit of crazy speculation here. I believe that each of the AI opponents also has a difficulty associated with it as well. I only say this because I noticed there were times that really good cards would end up around the table when worse cards in the same color would get drafted first. It's completely possible that these quote unquote worse picks were actually better for that opponent's deck, but it's hard to be sure without actually getting to see what each of your opponents ended up drafting. It's also worth mentioning that I never felt cheated by the AI. I never felt like they knew what I was doing and were just trying to cut me off. Overall, this makes the experience feel very natural, as it appears that all of your opponents have their own unique personalities. There is, however, one huge way in which the AI acts very unnatural, but I can't even call it a bug, as it's very beneficial to the player. The AI doesn't rare draft, meaning that they don't pick the rares and the mythics outside of their colors and archetypes. In each of my drafts, there were always good rares and even mythics still going around at 4th, 5th, or even 6th picks. In one of my drafts, I even decided to just take every rare that came my way, and I ended up with 10 or 11 different rares. Now of course this isn't very natural behavior for a pod, but it does create an environment where you really get to maximize the value that you're getting out of it. Even when I was trying to draft the very focused mindset and only pick the cards that were good for my deck, I still ended up with between 5 and 7 rares per draft. Okay, so you've drafted all of your cards, you've built a reasonable deck, now it's time for you to get into a game. If you've played any quick constructed events, then this setup should look very familiar to you. You're either going to play until you win 7 games, or until you lose 3 games. There are two very important caveats here though. Number one being that the milestones are different. In Quick Constructed, you only have to win four games to get your entrance fee back. But if you want to break even on a draft, you're going to have to win a whopping six games. This is probably because of point number two, which is that drafting uses a gem-based economy. So if you pay for your draft with gems, it's possible to earn those gems back. But if you pay for your draft with gold, then you're never going to get that gold back. So here's the big question. Is it worth it to do draft events? Well, to put it simply, I think it is. I played four different drafts, and in three of them, I felt like I got back way more than I put in. Ironically, it was the game where I tried to take all of the rares that I ended up not getting back what I put in, because by taking all of the rares, I didn't take a lot of the cards that were good for my deck, so I ended up with a pretty mediocre deck and scrubbing out at 0-3. Now, during my first draft, I actually got a lot of good cards. Not cards for my deck necessarily, but cards that I actually wanted in the game. Cards that I would have spent wild cards on anyway. 
Plus, I went 4-3, which meant I made over half of my entrance fee back in gems. So, for 5,000 gold, I got a lot of rares, some of which I actually wanted anyway. Plus, I got some gems to put towards another draft. Now, draft number two was probably the worst one for me value-wise, because I got less rares that I actually wanted, plus I only went 3-3, three and three, meaning I got less gems back. However, I did, after this draft, have enough gems to do another event for basically free. Now, in this quote-unquote free event, I decided to buckle down and really build a deck that I thought would win, and this is the one that got me to a great 7-1 record. So of course I earned enough gems to play again while getting to keep all of these rares on top of that. It was this last event in which I did very poorly. But at the end of the day, I am minus 5,000 gold and about 500 gems. But I have added about 30 rares and mythics to my collection. I've earned well over 100 commons and uncommons. I've won 5 packs and my vault meter has doubled from 25% to 50% through those packs and through drafting cards that I already owned. So the entrance fee can be kind of steep when it comes to gold, but you're going to get so much value back out of it. It can't be overlooked though that this format is kind of punishing. If you can't win 6 games, then you're not going to get your entrance fee back and you're not going to be able to play again unless you pay the full price again. So if you're not confident enough in your abilities that you think you can win 3 or 4 games at least, well then you might be better spending your gold on quick constructed events instead. But for the players who really think that they have what it takes to go all the way, this format is so worth it and I cannot recommend it enough. And as much as I hate spending money in these kinds of games, a draft only costs 5 US dollars. So for the price of one real pack, you can come into Arena and do an entire draft, and if you do well enough, you can do that draft again and again and again, meaning it's very affordable to do this event at least once a week. So those are my thoughts on drafting in Arena. I think it's totally worth it and that everyone should give it a try. You just want to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into so that you can get the maximum amount of value out of it. Well everyone, hopefully you enjoyed this review style video, and hopefully we'll get more unique events in Magic Arena so that I can keep doing videos like this. In the meantime, I've already got plenty of videos up about Magic Arena, and I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon, so stay tuned for more content. Thank you guys, I'll see you later.